Hello everyone and welcome back to my Let's Play of Hive Spot Brinsome. Last time we met Lank, a Jade Blood who was pretty desperate to have sex with someone before he was forced off planet. Or at least that's how he was in the route where we agreed to mature content. In the other route, he was very different. Where he was basically like a very chill poet guy. And uh, I, that, that was kind of weird to me. It was basically the very, very, very candy verse version of Lank is the best way I can put it. Anyway, we are on our very last troll, or in this case, trolls, I believe. Because I do remember there were a pair of, like, purple blood twins in the troll call. Or something like that. Whoever these people are. Barzum and Baisley. Obviously referencing Barnum and Bailey. They are quite cute. Alright, let's meet them. You've gotten pretty good at the old friend-making game by now, but even an old hand at palling around like you, a real platonic Lothario, has bad nights sometimes. Tonight was one of those nights. It's getting close to morning and not a new friend in sight. You've met new people, sure, but none of your conversations had panned out the way you'd wanted them to. Every interaction had come to a close with your friend count no higher than when you started, no matter how many compliments, offers to help, and other tried-and-true friending strategies you'd whipped out. You won't stand for it. You're determined to finish out the night with at least one more new buddy's name in your little black friendship book. But with the sun's about to rise, you admit Alternia has more than one sun? I knew it had more than one moon, but... but with the sun's about to rise, you have to admit you're cutting it a little close. As each minute ticks by, the sky gets a little lighter and the possibility of dying an agonizing, fiery death gets higher. Maybe it'd be best for you to just pack it in and find somewhere to spend the day. You pick up your trusty palm husk and call up one of the many friends you, have, you already have to ask if you can crash. Hell, maybe Skyla will be up for sharing a recuper coon again. The soothing ooze has kind of grown on you, and sleeping next to Skyla always makes you feel so comfy and safe. Turns out Skyla is more than down with you coming over. Time to make tracks. You turn tail and hurry in the direction of Skyla's digs, but it's not long before you run to a distraction. That is a cool hive. Oh my goodness. I want to live there. That distraction is in the form of a house. It's a dark, crooked thing, hulking close to the ground. Slotted wood walls, sloping roofs. Vines cling to it like dust and cobwebs cling to forgotten things in the attic. Something about it feels off. Well, it's obviously haunted. I'm just going to say it right now. It possesses a certain energy that sends shivers up your spine, making your hair stand on end. An instinct deep in your gut is telling you to give it a wide berth. On the other hand, it's shelter. Skyla's place is a ways off yet, and while the house is right here in front of you, it could be worth seeing if whoever lives here is willing to put up with you for the day. Uh, approach the house, because why not? There's nothing else for it. You make your way towards the house. Even though everything inside you is screaming to stay away. Even though with every step you take, your chest tightens and your hands tremble. By the time you reach the door, you're shaking like a leaf. Adrenaline zings through you. You could choke on it. You want to run, but you force yourself to keep moving forward. It's a slow motion race between you and the sunrise. At this rate, the suns will make it all the way into the sky before you can even knock. You drag yourself the rest of the way, stumbling out onto the front step. The door knocker is an intricate yet grotesque thing, an undulating loin... Undul und undulating loin. Wow. What is wrong with me? An undulating tongue lolling out of a set of sharp teeth, all in a cast iron. You grab the lumpy end of the tongue and bang it against the door. Nothing. Fuck. Maybe I'll get lucky and the door will be open? Out of options, you reach out and turn the doorknob. You feel the first licks of sunlight against the back of your neck. Is it just you as your skin's starting to blister? But today's your lucky day. The door opens. You should feel overjoyed at your life being spared. Instead, your focus, you focus on fully... Your focus is fully on how the roiling in your belly has bloomed fully into nausea. In the distance, inexplicably, is the peal of sirens, an insistent whining noise that only continues getting louder. You shouldn't have come here, but it's not like you had any other choice. You might as well see what awaits you inside, but as soon as you cross the threshold, you, the world lurches and you pass out. Cool. I like the decor in here. That's pretty sincere, by the way. I, I do like haunted mansion decor. You come to in a different room than the foyer, head ringing like someone just whacked it. When you move to sit up, there's a sound of skittering all around you, like hundreds of tiny insects are scurrying away to safety. Had they been roving the floor while you were knocked out? Gross. You prop yourself back on your hands and take a look around. Your impromptu nap has done nothing to assuage this deep sense of wrongness you have about this place. But hey, maybe you've managed to sleep through the day. Maybe the sun is set again so you can get the hell out of here. The sense of optimism is so misplaced, probably, but it's not as if you can check. There are no windows. You cast your eyes around the room. Underneath are the floral peeling wallpaper, the walls are riddled with damp and mold. On the other side of the room, an open door. Thank fuck. You aren't locked in, then. You can always go look for somewhere else in this place that might have got a di that might have a goddamn window. 
Yeah, obviously a purple blood hive. Or somebody who really likes purple bloods, at least. You step into a long, winding corridor. It's so cramped, uh, you feel as though the walls are closing in. When it had... While it had been warm enough outside, in here a deep chill sells over you, sinking deep into your bones. You're half convinced you'll never be warm again. Emanating from somewhere you can't see is music, tinny and rhythmic. It's soon interrupted by a crackling noise, like someone trying to tune to the correct station of a ra on a radio. Then one of the picture frames lights up. Looks like it was actually some sort of TV screen. Welcome. Welcome! We're glad that you're awake. And that you came to visit us. We've been really, 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 really bored in this stinky old house. It really sucked. We could have just died from how boring it was. Two voices. One monotonous and so quiet you can barely hear it. The other shrill, dramatic, like its owner never learned the meaning of ins indoor voice. Okay. One monotonous and quiet voice and one shrill and dramatic. I'll try and do that. Catching what the quieter person is saying isn't made any easier by the high-pitched giggling that starts up in the background whenever they start speaking. So hurry up and find us. We want to play a game. Gee, why do those words give you such a profound sense of deja vu? Because they're basically arc words and also a reference to Saw. The line goes dead. At the same time, a door pops open at the other end of the corridor. You're meant to go through it, you guess. You'd rather go somewhere else, anywhere else, other than through that door, but there's nowhere else to go. Or is there? Ah, oh, approach the door, why not? We'll play along. Oh, everything's bloody now. Your weariness only intensifies once you set off down the hall because the walls start fucking bleeding. You've seen enough troll blood at this point to be able to recognize it. Multicolored streams ooze over the wallpaper and faded portraits lining the wall, collecting and congealing in sticky, viscous puddles on the floor. The narrow hallway becomes steeped in the scent of copper. You walk faster, but the streams of iron fl follow you, sluicing down the ceiling as quickly as you walk. You reach the door. Eager to get away from the grisly sight, you throw it open, but oh god, you hadn't considered what might be waiting for you behind it. What if those two shady characters plan to torture you? Tie you up and steal your palm husk, texting an embarrassing message to your friends while you can only look on horror, helpless and unable to intervene? Anything but that. It's too dark to see anything. All you can do is fumble and feel around with your hands. Getting out of the room again is a no-go. The door swung shut behind you as soon as you stepped inside. You shuffle forward on wobbly legs. The floor feels unstable somehow, like it's going to open up and swallow you at any moment. Would it be a good idea to call out to see if anyone's here? You manage a feeble hello. Your voice echoes. Soft laughter reverberates back in response. Oh, this music. Nice. You catch a glimpse of something from the corner of your eye, a flash of purple. There's, a, there's, a, there's the sensation of eyes on the back of your neck watching you, but you can't discern where the other presence in the room is. If there even is one. You kind of hate this. Of all the shitty welcomes you've received, this one takes the cake. You have to get out of here. You try to gather your panic thoughts together to formulate a plan, but before you can do anything, a series of ropes appear seemingly from nowhere, coiling tight around you and holding you down. You're finally here. We've been waiting for you! A light comes on. It's not the warm, burning rays of sunlight. This room is windowless, too. But a spotlight, bright and harsh. It lights up a broad swath of the room, bleaching it white and sending long shadows stretching away from it. Nice. They're both very cute. You see that your captors- you can see your captors more clearly now. Two purple blood kids. Aside from their expressions, they look exactly the same. A manic glint sparkles in the eyes of one of them, and it's as sharp as his razor blade grin. The other looks more hesitant, almost sad. We're Baisley! And Barzum. You're the alien, ain't ya? You look weird. Your body's real weird. We wonder what color your blood is. Or how springy and slimy your acid tubes are. They squirm around like slither beasts when we slice open trolls' bellies. Are yours the same? You struggle against your bonds. You have no idea what acid tubes are, but you'd much rather they stay inside your body where they belong, thanks. You thought you'd move past the days where you had to serve as a torture muppet. All you needed was a few hours shelter from the sun, and if it's safe to go outside again, you'd really like to leave. This was the wrong thing to say, apparently. The twins leer at you disapprovingly. Or, well, one of them looks so disappointed he just might burst into tears. The other just looks pissed. No way. We told you. We've been so bored. Do you know what it's like? To be all alone? With no one else to play with? For wipes? We might have each other. We're never truly alone. That's what makes being us so great. But it's a little difficult to play pranks on someone. Who already- always, Who always knows what you're thinking and feeling. Wait, you thought Barzum was the quiet one and Baisley was the loud one, but it looks like they were- you're mistaken, or did they switch? If you weren't faced with the prospect of having your innards yanked out and played with by bloodthirsty children, you might be more puzzled by their statement. As it stands, you have more pressing problems on your mind right now, so their words more or less fly over your head. You squirm harder, even though it doesn't do any good. In fact, it just seems to make the twins matter. Sadder, you settle on smatter. 
Stop trying to get away. It's always like this. Nobody ever wants to play with us. We hate it. Now hold still. You look at them beseechingly, trying to appear as small and helpless as possible. Maybe it's a little pathetic giving puppy dog eyes to literal children, but you lost track of your own dignity a long time ago. They're not really going to do this, right? A noise starts up. It sounds suspiciously like a chainsaw. Is that you, or is there the scent of raw meat in the air? Where the hell is it coming from? You continue straining in your bonds, stomach clenching in fear, bile rising at the back of your throat. They're not actually going to hurt you, right? Oh god. Oh god, oh god, oh. You wake up gasping, but you aren't strapped down anymore. You're in the same room that you were in at the beginning. What happened? So I was- I started wondering this when the blood started dripping from the walls, but... Are they just messing with us with their chuckle voodoos or whatever? Because we don't actually know what chuckle voodoos do. Except that they apparently really scare people, so my theory is that chuckle voodoos make you basically hallucinate really terrifying things all around you. So, I guess we'll see. The room hasn't changed since you've been gone. There's still only one way out. You really, really don't want to step through the door again, but what else can you do? You step through the door. There's that radio crackling again. Welcome. Welcome! We're glad that you're awake. Their little greeting goes on ju just like it had before. A pre-recorded message, maybe? Your heart pans as you step through the second door. You're hoping you'll be able to sidestep the ropes this time, but instead of getting tied up, you trip forward into a vat of what feels like glue. You're lucky enough to have turned your face away from the stickiness so your nose is still above the surface so you can breathe. For now, anyway. But you can't move. You're finally here. We've been waiting for you. They're acting like it was the first time all over again. What is this fuckery? Are they messing with you? You met already mere minutes ago. No, we will remembered. Meeting a weirdo like you? Stop trying to trick us. Then everything goes black for a third time. And here you are again. Welcome. Welcome! Are you for real? This time you get shoved into a box. You're pretty sure you pass out while you're in the middle of getting buried alive. You come to in the room, you're beginning to think of yours yet again. You pass out five times. Ten. You begin to lose count. You never pass out at the same point during the twin shenanigans, but it inevitably happens. And you always end up right back where you started. The worst part is that while your conversation with the twin stays the same, the way they trap you changes. You get trussed upside down from the ceiling, dunked into a water tank, scrabbling to get out while your lungs begin to bur burn from lack of air. Every time you black out before you can die, but you've almost died dozens of times now, it's really beginning to stress you out. You have to be stuck in some sort of time loop. You see the sort of things in movies all the time, and everyone knows that movies are the best points of reference for one's actual life. The hero wakes up to the strains of an old pop song playing on the radio and reminisces over their childhood journals, which sends them back in time where they have to stop a crime before it happens, or maybe you're thinking of a different movie. Anyway, your point is you have to find a way out of the loop. Hopefully you won't have to do anything too wild like stab your past self and then throw your own bloody corpse out the window. Poor Dave. That would be really, really blow. Unfortunately, you can't seem to find any clues indicating what you should do next. You always pass out. The twins are always excited to play with slash torture you. They don't seem to be aware that any of this is happening from what you can tell. After around 20-something or other, you've had enough. You've had it. Enough is enough. You can't take any more giggling, any more of that hard, damp floor, any more excruciating games. You might not be any closer to figuring out what to do, but you have to try something. Uh... Remember who you are? My first thought was the Lion King. <laughs> There's one thing you've been doing wrong. Making this all a basket. You've been so preoccupied with not getting sliced to pieces with knives and everything that you've lost track of what's truly important. The word that echoes in your heart when you rise at dusk and pulses through your bloodstream during the rest of your waking hours until it's time to go to sleep. The word that's kicked off every single narrative you've started in thus far. Friendship. You'll do things differently this time. You're going to bring yourself to truly care about these creepy clown children, goddammit, even if it's the last thing you do. And with the way things are going, it very well could be. Their MO is oddly benign this time, a tickling machine. Unfortunately, it's a little difficult for you to talk to them through all the laughter. What are those noises they're making? I think they're trying to tell us something. Miraculously, the tickling stops. You wheeze, trying to catch your breath, hoping to god you haven't peed. You've managed not to wet yourself out of fear until now. It'd be just the worst to have broken your streak during due to laughing too hard. What is it about clowns and you divesting your body of waste? After assuring yourself that your underwear is pleasantly dry, you ask, you ask, If they kill you, won't they just be alone again? How is that beneficial for anyone? They'll be bored and you'll be, uh, dead, which you would really rather not be. Their creeping saccharine smiles transform into matching expressions of confusion. Barzone puts a finger to her chin, cocking her head to one side as if deep in thought, almost like a puppy. Under any other circumstances, you might even consider it cute. What are you talking about? We don't want to kill you. Maybe just cut you a little. You'll heal right back up again. Don't be such a wiggler. 
Some of the things they've tried to inflict on you would, def would have definitely taken more than your regular healing functions to recover from. But wait, you think back to Ramel taking a whole ass club in her side, acting like it was no big. She said, she said something about higher blood colors being able to take more of a beating, too. Are the twins assuming that's the case for everyone? God, this is what happens when all the adults go in society go off planet and leave a bunch of zoo animals to bring up their kids. Or, well, trolls also solve most of their problems by killing each other. You can't discount that either, you suppose. You take a closer look at the twins. There isn't any malice in either of their faces. The only emotion you can discern is idle curiosity. You decide to take that as encouragement. You explain that no, you won't heal up from being sliced open. Or from an on-fire scuttle buggy being splung at your head. Because you're a human, and humans heal differently from trolls. Well, differently from high blood trolls, at least. You even use your best babysitter voice for good measure. You feel like you're giving a stern talking to about the importance of taking care of one's toys so they don't break. Instead, you propose, why don't you be friends? You can all play together instead of you being the, uh, subject of their torment. They'll be able to play with you for longer that way, too. They give you a strange look. Friends? What's that? Do people not agree to be their playmates very often? No. Usually everyone runs in the other direction. So we have to catch them. Or trick them! That explains a lot. You think you're beginning to understand. If they let you down, you can try and show them what you have in mind. They do. They actually free you. They turn all the lights on in the room, too, so you can finally see everything in it. Oh, that's pretty cute. I mean, aside from the blood and stuff, but... It's pretty clear that they're lonely. It's bigger than you expected and set up like a surface tent. Cir circus tent. A wire suspended along the ceiling. A person-sized target board rotates at dizzying speeds against the back wall. Juggling clubs, clubs, knives, scarves, and other props are piled across the floor. You recognize a few of the mechanisms they had inflicted on you before. It's pure chaos. So, what else do they do with all this stuff? They're still staring at you as if they aren't quite sure how to deal with you engaging with them voluntarily. You're feeling pretty tentative of yourself. This whole interaction seems incredibly precarious. You're afraid that if you make a misstep, you'll end up back in the tickling rack again. This isn't ours, we just found it when we got here. But it does look a lot like what's in our hive. We can do shows. And stunts! All kinds of cool stuff. Fuck, even when they aren't threatening you, the way they talk in chorus like that freaks you out a little. In perfect unison, like they're one voice instead of two. You shake off your fears and suggest that they show you a little something. They scurry- they seem to like the idea. Excitedly, they scurry over to the target board. One twin stands against it while the other picks up a handful of throwing knives. You're anxious. You don't exactly want them to rough up each other instead of you. But Barzum just throws the knife in a graceful arc. They surround Baisley perfectly, barely missing him. You gasp, your mouth a perfect O. The twins seem pleased with themselves, laughing like they're sharing a secret. If you think that's impressive, watch this! They execute a sick flip on a pair of trapezes above a bed of swords, making a daring escape from one of the contraptions they trapped you in. They move similarly to how they speak, perfectly in tandem with each other. With the variety of obsessions you've seen among your friends, it figures that it was only a matter of time until you met someone who made a hobby of risking their lives. It's not too out there compared to cage fighting, you suppose. Or collecting saucy East Alternian fig figures. You could have just escaped from the trap we put you in earlier, you know? Why didn't you? You laugh nervously. You haven't exactly had much practice, and maybe it would have been easier if you had someone to help. You look at the two of them pointedly. You didn't even realize siblings were a thing among trolls, let alone twins. Sibling? What's that? You know, someone you, uh, share a Lucis with? Someone who you hatched with in the same clutch? Are you phrasing that right? We do share Eleusis. We share everything! We didn't just hatch from the same clutch. We hatched from the same egg! We were going to be a single troll, but... We split in two! Just our bodies, though. Our minds are still one. One person, two bodies. We're one the same. Okay, maybe siblings aren't a thing on Alternia after all. Being literally the same person is quite a, a bit different from the human concept of twins or siblings. Somehow this leads to them telling you all about a number of exploits they had with some of the other kids in their neighborhood. One story led to another, and soon you're recounting some of your own adventures, too. They particularly love your attempt at giving an impression of Nike, clapping and crowing as you get into a dramatic power stance and flex your flimsy muscles. You can't help but feel a little proud of yourself. You feel like the guy on Jurassic Park who walked into the Velociraptor den all, be chill, my dudes, and they actually listen to him. Besides, there's something great about making kids laugh, even kids who were trying to murder you less than an hour ago. The twins are in the middle of talking about a prank they'd pulled the a prank they'd played that they found hilarious, and that you've been trying hard not to grimace and horror at, when you feel it, a certain change in the air. Didn't they mention they'd been stuck here? Did we? Yes, we have. When we try to go out the door, some sort of force pushes us back. You're the first other person we've seen since we got here. You have a hunch that might have changed. Why don't you all try again? They look at you skeptically. If you want, 
It's not going to be any different, though. You just tell them all to trust you. You look from th th you look at the front door. The twins are crowding you from either side, clinging onto your arms and edging so close it's like they're trying to burrow into you. This is really cute. Ready? They nod. You push against the door. It opens and you breathe in the cool night, air cool evening air. Not so fast. We've gotten this far before, but we won't be able to go any farther. You'll see. You take one step, then another. As you look beyond the grounds of the house, you see things yet when you first got here. Mounts in the distance, other houses. Before, all you could see was shrubbery. You pick up the pace. The house falls away behind you, disappearing into the fog. Whoa! You did it. You actually did it! We can finally leave. They swoop in to grab you, hugging you hard. The curving horns of their masks almost stab you in the cheek. These things are a bit of a hazard when their wares only come up to about to where your chest is. They keep talking before you can get a word in, pulling you forward and shuffling you along between them. It looks like you were right. It wasn't just enough to save yourself, you had to save them too. You don't know how, but the key to making this little patch of universe obey the rules of reality once more was friendship all along. Something's wrong. <laughs> you should have seen your face. You were shit your game tubes terrified. You even sighs there. Incessant giggling surrounds you like so many playful ghosts. Yes, yes, you say. Very clever. They're the ones behind all this nonsense, weren't they? You started guessing somewhere towards the end. The You wiggle your hands vaguely. All the time stuff. They sure scared you, alright. Um, no? That wasn't us. We were talking about the bloody walls and creepy sounds. No, that was real. That was all us. That was all. Chuckle voodoos. Hey, I was right! <laughs> We're the best at chuckle voodoos. We got you so good! They both bounce beside you excitedly. You blink down at them. You have no idea what the heck chuckle voodoos are. But you can only guess that it's some sort of illusionary thing. So they didn't have anything to do with the time messing up? Folding in on itself? No. We told you. We've been trying to get out of that stupid house. For wipes. Maybe even a perigee. Did you really think that was our hive? Our place is so much cooler than that dump. Visit their actual hive? You have your reservations about that, but you can't find it within you to say no as they eagerly pull you along, one twin tugging your hand, the other looping an arm in yours. You look back at the house one last time. You have no clue whether the twins are lying or if they're telling the truth, what really caused what happened here, but right now, you're content enough knowing that you'll never have to see this place ever again. No, what's happening? Do you want to understand? Not yet. Okay. I will understand at a point in the future. But not yet. Fuck this. There's one thing you've been doing wrong. Appealing to the twins to let you go. All they seem to care about is torturing you. Of course, simply asking them for your freedom isn't going to work. You'll do things differently this time. If you want to escape, you'll have to go on the offensive. You wake up again. Disembodied voices, bleeding walls, game check, check, check. You head towards the twins' room. Stand back, you yell, before you can they can launch into the their tirade. You're a weird, scary alien with weird, scary alien superpowers, and you're not afraid to use them. You switch on your phone's torch app, waving it around. You even attempt an intimidating roar for added effect. The only superpowers you're aware of is your irresistible charm and a set of truly banging games, but they don't need to know that. Your gambit works. They don't cower in fear exactly, exactly but they're bam bamboozled enough for you to look frantically around the room as much as you can see with your paltry light, paltry light source. There! An air vent with a loose grill. With a desperate yell, you launch yourself up towards it and crawl inside. The twins, finally aware this is all just an elaborate ruse, are start shouting after you. The twins' indignant voices start to fade as you wiggle deeper into the dusty guts of the house. You can't have very long. It's only a matter of time until the diminutive terrors climb into the vents after you. Or maybe they'll run ahead and then cut you off via one of the other rooms the vents connected to. They must know the layout of the house better than you do. Much to your surprise, though, you re you reemerge at one of the outside walls with no trouble. It's dusk, not day, which for which you murder a quick thank you to the merciful overlords. From here, it's a simple matter of picking your way down the vines until you get to the bottom. Once your feet touch the ground, you start running. When you cast one last wild glance back over your shoulder, you catch sight of them, your captors who you've successfully hoodwinked. They're standing in the front, the grand front doorway, screaming. You have no idea why they aren't coming after you, but you don't question it, pumping your legs until they're burning. It's a good thing you spent all that time jogging with Stelsa. You've really gotten good at running, running away from your problems. You stop running once you can't see the house anymore. You're a little surprised that getting away turned out to be that simple, but you know better than to look a gift horse beast in the squat gaper. Relief floods through you in waves. You did it! You got away! You slow down to a leisurely walking pace, pulling out your phone as you go. You have a slew of texts from Skylar who'd been wondering what happened to you after you never turned up. 
Her invitation to come over and hang out still stands, though. Oh boy, you can't wait to finally make your way over there and chill with her. You'll never play favorites among your pals, but you have to admit you have to hold a particularly fondness for Skyla. Her whole thing where she always makes sure not to cause you any bodily harm? That definitely has its charms. I know, right? She's wonderful. You keep walking, but after a while your stomach starts to sink. It's been half an hour and your surroundings don't look any different. You should be closer to Skyla's neck of the woods by now. It's not until you catch sight of a weathered wall all wound with ivy that you realize what's going on. It's the house again. You're still stuck. You're not going to be able to leave its grounds no matter how much you walk. You might have escaped the house, but whatever curse or time-space witchcraft this is isn't confined to within these walls. You're in a pocket dimension of sorts, and you don't know how to break out. So now you can either return to the twins since they're the only company you have out here, or make these bushes your new best friends. You look dopefully out at the mouths of scraggy underbrush before you. You'd probably best get used to gazing at nothing but this, since it's all going to be it's all you're going to be seeing for a long, long time. Forever lost. We're still wearing Malik's hoodie, yes. Thank you. Alright, um We're going to look for another exit. No, there has to be something else here. Ignoring the voice's instructions, you examine the walls of the corridor instead. Soon enough, you notice something funny about one of the paintings. Its frame seems much thicker than the others, which strikes you as somehow suspicious. Feeling along its bottom edge reveals a button. You push it. There's a groaning sound, and part of the wall folds itself away, revealing a tunnel of some sort. Ha! You knew it! You're so focused on trying to make your escape that you rush through the opening without looking. If you'd been more careful, you might have noticed one very important thing. Past this doorway, there is no floor. Your feet meet thin air, sending you pitching downwards. Drat, you think, as you plunge towards a pit of knive knives belief. Pit of- Pit of knives beneath you. You reached a follower of Milestone and Cheddar the other day, too, and you hadn't gotten around to bequeathing it to any of your friends in case something like this happened. Your final regretful thoughts are of your account, dusty and abandoned, with no one there to continue to update after you're gone. Game over. We be dead. Alright. And then, I believe the last bad ending is to just avoid the house, which will probably, since we're already at the house, we're probably still stuck in the dimension, so... Yeah, no, that's not happening. Didn't you just establish that this place gives you the heebiest of jeebies? Plus, there's always a chance that the inhabitant will call you instead of help you. You're sticking to your original plan, thank you very much. Firmly ignoring the house, you continue on your way. You make good progress for a while. Your maps, your maps app says you're heading in the right direction, except... Okay, what the fuck? Why are you here again? Why- did you take a wrong turn somewhere? Whatever, you're not gonna dwell on it. Time is running out and you'll need to get away from the stupid house pronto. You'll make sure you do it right. This time you'll go... Um, left? Okay, you split, breaking into a jog. The scenery flicks past you as you pick up the pace, urgency spurring you on. It's getting even lighter. Won't be long now. What? You check your palm husk again. You're right back where you start, even though just a moment ago the map's GPS put you at a decent distance away. This is ridiculous. There's obviously something weird going on, but the suns are creeping over the horizon. Time's up. There's nothing else for it. You make your way towards the house. Even though everything inside you is screaming at you to stay away. Even though with every step you take, your chest tightens and your hands tremble. By the time you reach the door, you're shaking like a leaf. Adrenaline zings through you. You could choke on it. You all run, but you force yourself to keep moving forward. It's a slow motion race between you and the sunrise. At this rate, the suns will make it all the way into the sky before you can even knock. You drag yourself the rest of the way, stumbling onto the front step. The door knocker is an intricate yet grotesque thing, an undulating tongue lolling us a set of sharp teeth, all in cast iron. You grab the lumpy, lumpy end of the tongue and bang against the door. Um, I believe this is all the same now. Uh, looks like it. Yeah, that's all the same. Okay. Um, load. Let's just go right, just to see what happens. Um... Nope, it's all the same stuff. Okay. Okay, I think we saw everything with Barnum and Baisley. That's their names, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Zep. You played a game with some prankter pranksters. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to talk for a minute, and then I'm going to check out the do you want to know thing. And if that if that's very short, I'll put it like right after me talking about stuff. So yeah, they 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 were very cute. So fraternal twins, basically, right? Except not quite twins, but kind of twins. So yeah, but they were cute. I can tell that they're just like really lonely, and 
they're they're young and they don't understand yet the concept of hurting others i don't think so yeah they have a chance to move away from killing people because i don't think they want to kill people they just uh they overestimate the amount of damage a person can take cause, because they're high bloods and super durable but yeah hopefully we go back to their hive and they, i meet their lucis and then we all become friends that would be very nice yeah so this is where I'm going to put the put the um, do you want to know thing if it's short. And if it's long, then I'm not going to put anything. It'll just be a separate video, so. Alright, if you're still here, then I guess that means I didn't put the thing in. It's probably too long, so it'll be its own video after this. So, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!